Well, Michael, I was just talking, obviously, about how the movie really feels like it could be from the 80s. And I, I almost feel like there's, there's a level that you can cross where you sort of could or could not choose to have some details in. Yeah, I mean, that was the challenge. And the term I used was hindsight humor. And I didn't want to have any hindsight humor. So the, the goal, um, you think whatever you think about the movie, but our goal in making it and writing was to have, to have it be told from the first person perspective of a 13 year old in present day 1985 who did not even know what the word irony meant or, you know, it's earnest to the point of embarrassment maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, as first-time actors, how was it for you jumping in? Miles, this is your very first film, correct? Your first feature? Yes, it was. It was very awkward at first, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was really chill on set. Like, it was, like, no pressure at all. So it was just like, go ahead and do it. I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, it wasn't bad at all. Marcello, how about you? Um, I mean, the whole acting thing was just, like, a whole new experience. Like, our first day was just, like, us eating ice cream and, like, playing games and stuff, so... <laughs> I mean, it was kind of easy to like work into, and then we started getting into the harder stuff. But Michael was always there for us, helping us out, giving us advice, and he just really brought us all together and made it work. I mean, yeah, I really think that the whole atmosphere on set was just a lot of support at all times. And I mean, you can tell by the film that it's a fun storyline, and the atmosphere on set was just a lot of energy and really fun. So I thought, as far as a first act, real feature film acting experience, it was the best I could have asked for. Um, I feel for Rad, it was kind of just like a little bit of awkwardness and him just trying to like find himself and just see who he really is. And when he goes to Ocean City on vacation, he kind of figures out who he is and he meets Miles and he meets Emmy and all them. And it's just uh, him finding himself really, yeah. is how I would explain it. Yeah. A lot is going on uh, in your face and in your eyes during, during a lot of those. Yeah. Those scenes is really nice. Nicely I remember done. the uh, when he was doing the beach scene, the Miss Kiss, and that was the last night we shot actually. And Wyatt, the cinematographer, and I were like, "What is he doing? It's like this is some like Woody Allen performance of like his eyeballs are sort of creating." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm not directing anymore. He's just he's rolling with it, you know." But it is really difficult, like you said. And then maybe Miles, what about? I mean, Teddy, he was just trying to like, he was kind of like a loner at first, and then he found Rad, and he was like, wow, this dude's awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, he really just needed someone to, like, stick to, because he didn't really have any friends. And then he was, like, really opened up and was a goofy kid. I, th I think that Stacy's a really interesting character because she kind of fluctuates between protagonist and antagonist. Like, I mean, she's obviously not the protagonist, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I just think that there had to be such a balance between good and bad for her yeah. throughout the whole film, and I think that's what made her a very dynamic love interest character, not just the cut and paste pretty blonde girl that he has a crush on. Cinematographically, the movie really has got a great feel to it. It does have that sort of grainy feel from like a 1982 or 83 movie, and all those stop motion moments, those kind of stop and zoom in moments that uh, were in a lot of 80s movies are kind of more than you sort of are aware of. They're sort of lodged in the back of my mind a little yeah. bit like that. Yeah, even, I would say even La Jete, Chris Marker, if we want to get real film nerdy. Um, and then the like Dolly of the Buffet uh, was a minute long Dolly of the Buffet. I was like, let's go Bellatar here. Let's go to Hungary for this shot. Um, <laughs> But yeah, with, with, uh, we had the discussion, and now I feel like even in the past year, you used to have the discussion, are we shooting film or are we shooting digital? And it's just so discouraging to me and depressing a little bit is that it's just so quickly everyone's moved past it. And digital is doing great things, but um, if you're trying to make, I quickly on a phone call said to the producers, I would be insecure presenting this movie to an audience that was supposed to be made in 1985 if we didn't shoot on film and everyone uh, just right away was like, that's the discussion. Now the difference is we shot on super 16 millimeter versus 35, and I think if we'd shot on 35, the budget would have been exponentially increased, but I prefer the, the, the grid and grain. A big production model, I don't know if anyone knows the movie This Is England, Shane Meadows from late, uh, mid 2000s, I think that was a real big production model to say this feels like a made for BBC drama from the 80s. And although our movie was inspired by Hollywood movies, it was still that, that precedent set. There's a great moment with, with Amy Sedaris when she is showing her tan line. And you sort of give the wide-eyed thing, and it, and it reminded me of what a, what a great, beautiful scene stealer you are, sort of very quietly <laughs> being able to steal a scene. There's Amy Sedaris through there, and then with one look, it all shifts back to you.
Well, you know, she, she was a woman of a, f of a few words. I think I, I, in our conversation when uh, I decided to do the movie, I was like, mm, could she maybe say some more? And you were <laughs> like, no, nope, I don't think so. And I was like, all right, I'll do the movie, but watch out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just thought the characters were really funny. I hadn't done one like that kind of big of a character for a while. And um, uh, it was actually based on your mom, right? And he had me listen to her uh, talk, do my lines in the strange uh, accent. And Anyone I from Maryland here or is to understands the Maryland accent? It's very hard it's to be really taught I, I and learned. I didn't pull it off. So I went with a, I, I decided she was from Virginia somewhere and gave her a southern accent because I just didn't, wasn't paid enough to learn. <laughs> 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 now I'm going to go to a voice coach. No voice coach for this no, one, there, right? there was, there was not in the budget. I would have <laughs> needed a voice coach. Maybe for a week I might have gotten it, but. Um, it, it's just such a crazy <laughs> dialect, and it changes block to block because she she was raised there, but she doesn't have the the same accent that you that it's, I needed to it have. It has been pointed out, bef like when I was younger, I'd have it pointed out a little bit, but as I've gotten older, I don't I don't want to have it, you know, I don't want to like <laughs> <laughs> doing acting and stuff. I don't want to have this round O sneaking in all the time, and <laughs> it's crazy. And accent, there's crazy so. words out of nowhere. You're like, what? <laughs> like I also saw. Uh, uh, saw your character in some ways like she could easily have been sort of the mom of like your character in all the right moves or something i think she kind of like had that sense of like you know she, or she could have been that i mean obviously that character you know 25 years later like she kind of recognized in her son a certain rebelliousness that she probably recognized in her youth was that something that you thought about yeah i did and i uh i i felt like um you know because i've been playing moms in the 80s for 30 years now That's right. So I'm future, uniquely right. qualified to play <laughs> this part. <laughs> um, but you know what? You know, people always go, what is it like to play a mom? And, I, I, you know, moms are just women, you know. They're just, they have different things. And, you know, I just, <laughs> <laughs> they're different. They're just people with babies. Um, <laughs> I think that, that she was a really unique character, and he gave me a lot of little clues, you know, just the fact that she was so cheap and that she was just trying to keep her family together and that she was trying to, you know, just do the best she could. And, it, and she really is a good mom. Yeah. She, she really is. And they, it was a really nice family, and that's what you're saying. It wasn't uh, dysfunctional. It was just like, quirky, like every family.